If you play piano at all, you can probably play something like this. Now, these chords are basic, they're beautiful, and they're incredibly boring. I mean, look at this man's face. There's nothing behind the eyes, completely devoid of emotion. Watch what happens when we add a little spice to this chord progression. Now, you can call these chords spicy chords, you can call them dirty chords, hell, you can call them chords for all I care. All that matters is that your audience's faces crook up as if a skunk covered in knockoff cologne just walked into the room. My name's Adam Mattis and these are the Crooked Face Chords, the chords that make life worth living. Make sure to check out our free beautiful Crooked Face Chords ebook. You can find that in the description. So, what are the chords that we're going to use to spice up this very beautiful chord progression? Well, we're going to use three different chords. The first is secondary dominance. The second are tritone substitutions. The third is something we like to call the open studio moo chords. But Adam, don't forget to show them my favorite. Uh, are you talking about these? All right, Peter, I'll make you a deal. If you can stay awake through this whole video, I will show them your favorite chords at the end. But first, let's get to secondary dominance. Secondary dominance are our first pathway to get to our basic beautiful chords. You remember our basic beautiful chords, C, A minor, F, and G, just your simple one, six, four, five in the key of C. Now, a secondary dominant is any dominant chord that leads us to one of those big landmark chords. So if we're going to our A minor chord, instead of going right to the A minor, we can throw in the dominant seventh chord from a fifth above or a fourth below. In this case, it would be an E dominant seven to an A minor. When we go to the F7, why not throw in a C7? That's a secondary dominant chord going to F. When we go to our G7, we can throw in a D dominant seven. Let's hear how that sounds all together. It's very churchy, it's very classic, it sounds beautiful. And the great thing about secondary dominant chords is they're very malleable. You can put the bass, basically any note of that dominant chord could be the root. So let's say we're gonna use all the thirds of the dominant chords to lead to our landmark beautiful basic chords. Right? Third in the bass of all these. What if we use the fifth on the bass of all of the dominant chords, like this? little bass line pattern starts to develop. You could even do the seventh of all these going to the third of the landmarks. It's a little bit confusing, but it sounds like this. It's pretty beautiful, actually. So these are our secondary dominant chords. Wait, Peter. I see you. We will get to it, but first we got to hit the tritone subs. So if we look at our E7 to A minor, right? Our secondary dominant going to that A minor. Notice that we can change the root note a tritone away or a diminished fifth away to B flat. We don't really have to change the rest of the chord. The root can just change and it sounds great. This gives us a B flat seven sharp 11. It sounds very technical. It is very technical, but it's beautiful and it's really easy to remember. We're just swapping out that root of E seven for B flat seven, same third seven. And then that E now becomes the sharp 11. Listen to this. We can do the same thing going to F, right? Instead of C seven, which would be this, we can change the root from C to G flat us this nice sound. Same thing going from uh, D7 to G. Instead of the D in the root, we can play A flat. So that whole thing sounds like this. So despite all of this technical jargon about changing the root up a tritone, the cool thing is all you have to remember is that we're approaching each one of our beautiful basic landmark chords 
from a half step above it. Hey, life is short. If you're tired of running in circles with your playing, you gotta check out Adam's courses at Open Studio, the number one online jazz community. Back to the video. Right, so the dominant chord, that's a half step above. Another great way to do this would be to do sus chords instead of sharp 11s on all of the tritone subs. This sounds really great. Even a tritone sub on the way back. So those are our tritone subs. Now next we're gonna, Peter, Peter, calm down man, we're gonna get to your favorite in a minute. But first we have to hit the Open Studio Moo Chord. Finally, we have the Open Studio Moo Chord. This is a cheeky little name we gave to a chord that's very similar to a chord called the Mu Chord. So this is an E major triad, add nine. That's the original Steely Dan Mu Chord. But when you take the third of the chord, the G sharp, and you put it in the bass like this, this is the Open Studio Moo. Now there is a difference. Donald Fagan said that a mu chord can't have the nine and the third, they can't be separated. They all have to be together. So when we put the third in the bass, technically, according to Mr. Donald Fagan, that's not a mu. This is now what we're calling an open studio mu. Hey, if they get to make stuff up, so do we. So this is now called the open studio mu chord. This is such a great way to get from one beautiful chord to the other. So check it out. We go from our C to our A, we're gonna put the open studio move there, that major triad with the added nine. Come on now. Again, happening long before Steely Dan. Church musicians have been doing this forever. It's a beautiful chord though. Check that out again. All different inversions. It's so clean and crisp. Do not sleep on this beautiful open studio moo chord. So those are our three chords, and I think now we can finally get to Peter Martin's favorite. Are you ready, Peter, to check out? Peter, Peter, you there? You've been so, no? Peter, are you? This dude's asleep. After all that, this dude fell asleep after I explicitly asked him not to fall asleep in my video. Unbelievable. Well, you know what's gonna wake him up? Some Kush chords. Kush chords. What I tell you? Kush chords indeed, Peter Martin. So this is a completely different paradigm than what we've been doing because we're gonna take this entire beautiful, basic, kind of boring chord progression, and we're gonna take everything up a minor third from the key of C, major to the key of E flat major. Now you could also think about this as the key of C minor. I don't like to think about it like that, but maybe that's just me. I like to think about going from C major to E flat. The only thing that stays the same throughout is the tonic itself of C major. So if we have our one, six, four, five in the key of C major, we can play one, six, four, five. The one stays in C major, but the six, four, five go up a minor third to the key of E flat major. So we have now C major, C minor, a flat major seven and B flat seven. Back to C major. How beautiful is that? You know what's cool too? Is we can even do things like secondary dominance, moo chords, and tritone subs. Check this out. And that, my friends, is modal interchange, also known as Kush chords. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe and download the free, beautiful Crooked Face Chords ebook. That's yours for free. If you liked these chords that we were working on today, you're gonna love sugar chords. Yeah, yeah, play those, play those. Peter, go back to bed, man. Happy practicing. Hey, life is short. If you're tired of running around, Hey, life is short. If you're tired of running in circles with your jet. Okay. Hey, life is short. If you're tired of running around with your jazz playing, you gotta check out Adam.
Running in circles. 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 Running in circ